while I was in this trance state, it was like my third eye actually opened and my vision went from black static to space. A dark round planet, I think, with a misty red aura stretching from the sides. The space was vast and filled with stars, and what I think may have been a star forming, I'm not really sure what it was. This didn't last long be before I went back to normal. And the feeling while I was there was what I can only think to be love in its most purest form. I also felt excited, of course. I never got body tingles during the meditation, so the visual change was unexpected. Unless I only get visual change when my body is in a state of high vibration. I did get tingles after the meditation though. I tried telling my significant other about it, but they've written it off as being my imagination. And of course, that is plausible. But even my imagination isn't capable of the feeling that I had felt within this state. I've never felt anything like it before. All my fears and worries were gone, like I could do anything. I felt nothing but an enormous amount of love. It felt like I was at home. All I've been able to think about is how badly I want to go back. I'm going to try again tonight. I hope I'm able to contact some sort of physical being. I still felt like I contacted something, but nothing in the realm of physicality, or at least not that I could make out. Also, just so everyone is aware, I've never done psychedelics or gotten high for meditation. I do this so others, as well as myself, can't use that as an excuse to discredit my experiences. I've always been sober and completely conscious during these experiences. Since I've been eight years old, I've experienced the same dream, more times than I can count. I'm running through a tall forest of flowers while something cruel and malevolent pursues me. Then I make it to this big old Victorian built house. I always go inside the house, passing a kitchen and a bathroom with a rose-coloured tub. Once inside, I go up a set of stairs and into a bedroom on the right. Inside the bedroom in the closet, there's a stair that leads to the attic. I go up the stairs and into the attic. I go through the attic and there's a small hidden door that takes me behind a false wall, where there's a little hallway hidden from view. This hallway ends in a room. Okay, you might wonder what it is. We all have dreams. What makes this different is this house exists. The bathroom, the stairway, the hidden hallway and the room exist, exactly as I described. But I've never been there. How did I discover it existed then? Good question. Two years ago, my dad was at my farm helping my husband and I with some renovations. We got to talking one night, and I asked him how his recent trip to Ontario had gone. Good, he replied, except our rental car was broken into, and all our ID, cash, and documents were stolen. That's awful, I answered. What did you do? He said, sadly, our family wasn't much help, and no one really opened their homes up. However, he had these friends since he was a kid. Twins, whose family lived on the plots adjoining their home. Their family home was empty, but they kept it for when they wanted to travel as a second home. He said his friends had opened their home to him and my stepmother and saved the trip. Honestly, that would have been the end of it, Tilly said. Everything was like I remembered it, right down to the secret room. I don't know why. My blood stopped moving. My whole body froze up. Secret room? I forced out. Dad, don't tell me anything more. I've been having a recurring dream since I was little. Let me tell you what I've seen. Then, you tell me if I'm right. So I walked in through the house, the hidden hallway into the room. I even described the pillows on the floor in detail. He was white and pretty shook up as I gave minute detail on a place I had only ever seen while asleep. The strange thing is that often in my dreams, I was not me. I mean, I was, but I was also someone else. Like, I remember a girl sometimes being in the secret room with me and the other boys. In the dream, I have a crush on her, although I'm a girl. In the dreams, I think I may have been my dad, if that makes any sense. 
or so, the evil malevolence that would cause me to run to the house and the secret room where I felt safe. My grandfather was a very, very bad man. The kind that lines up his kids and shot at their feet when he was drunk. The kind of man that did unspeakable things to his own daughters and would drive his wife and kids down deserted roads, take their shoes and make them walk barefoot back home in the snow in the middle of winter. The tall flowers in my dream. My dad said there was an empty plot between his house and his two best friends. His dad had rented it out to his friend's family and they had filled it with sunflowers. For the record, my dad rarely talks about his past. I've never been to his house in real life, and we live in Alberta, over 3,000 kilometres away from where he grew up. I'm not young, and I've never seen a photo of his friends or their home. Since the revelation, I've not had the dream again. I kind of miss it. My secret room that was only mine in dreams. My dad did ask his friends if I could go and see the house if I made it down to Sturgeon Falls, Ontario. I would love to see it for real. I'll start off by saying I've experienced a lot of paranormal events of many different kinds throughout my life. I'll also say that I've watched Stephen King's Firestarter and in fact loved the book and movie. If someone were to, sh were to share the experience I'm about to share with you, I'd probably laugh and say they're just living a Stephen King fantasy. So you may or may not believe me. I'll understand if you don't. But I wonder if anyone else has had experience with this. This took place in 1997, my last year of high school. I was dating a boy named Jeffrey, and we'd been dating for a few years. The weekend, we went to a dance for our local Gymkhana. It's like a rodeo group. I was still fairly new to the group, and didn't know a lot of people. Midway into the dance, Jeffrey said he was going to leave to drive a girl we went to school with home. I asked him to hurry, as I was shy, didn't know many people, and felt awkward there alone. Time ticked by, a half hour, an hour, two hours, and Jeff didn't return. He had been my ride, so I decided to walk to the nearest payphone and call my mom to come get me. Now this entire time, my anger had been growing steadily, so I was pretty much fuming and ready to boil over. In fact, my hands were clenched in fists as I walked out after being ditched by my boyfriend. I should also add that I had recently started being suspicious of him and the girl he had driven home. However, I had no proof of anything was going on until that moment. So I walked outside and who did I see sitting in his truck idling in the parking lot but Jeffrey? I was so angry and I don't know why I said the word burn. It was honestly probably because of the Stephen King book Firestarter and what I felt was an instant rush of all the pent up anger leaving me all at once. Also, in that same moment, or a second or two later, flames shot out of the hood of Jeffrey's truck. He jumped out, took off his jacket, and smothered the flames. I have to tell you, as angry as I was before, all the anger was gone, and I went trotting over. I asked him what he thought had happened, and he said he wasn't sure. Maybe a fuse had lit on fire. I was all smiles, and I told him what I had experienced, and what I thought had happened. That might seem weird, but I had literally no anger left at all. In fact, I felt great. He looked really concerned and said that he thought I, I might be a witch. I was definitely am not. Anyway, because I never share this, I don't know if there are other people out there with a similar experience. I did have a thought, though, about spontaneous combustion and how and why it might kill people. I pushed all the energy out with a directive. If someone were filled with that much anger and didn't push it out, I think it could possibly lead to spontaneous combustion. So the following happened around 2014 in the Appalachian Mountains of Pennsylvania. I was about 14 or 15 when I had this initial experience. And it left my mind until I began researching abductions and different paranormal entities. Everyone within my rural area lives in forests and hunts religiously. And I'm no exception to that rule. 
It was about October in archery buck season in Bedford, Pennsylvania. It was a normal evening of hunting at the base of the mountain in the swamps that my family owned. My dad wasn't near me at the time, so he was on the opposite end waiting for a large buck that he'd been trying to ambush. I was sitting in my climber stand in a pine tree, packed area with two trails running underneath me. It was still fairly bright outside, with just a slight darkness to the area. Enough that you could see the haze of a flashlight, yet still clearly see ahead without it. I was facing the mountainside, so thick pine trees mostly covered the sky from my view. I heard leaves begin to crackle, and suddenly roughly five or six deer ran full speed past my stand and back up the mountain. They came out of the pine saplings that lay in front of me, as if they came from nowhere. It was at that moment, a massive LED-looking light flashed and seemed to fill the sky in above me. It was a bluish light, and covered three to four treetops. As quickly as it flashed, it left, however, and when it left, everything turned dark. It was ridiculous to think that it turned dark that quickly as I couldn't see the reflective sight of my bow at that point. It was as if the sun just went out as soon as it went over the distant mountains on my back. I sat there dumbfounded, pondering what had happened for about ten minutes, before my dad came by in his side-by-side -side on the road. I left the stand that night weirded out by it, but I didn't think anything weird until the next day. I woke up with a cold sore on my left eye, which isn't unusual to me, as it happens all the time due to sunlight or stress. I got dressed and went to school, but as the day went on, I began to get a bad headache. I made it to lunch when a lunch lady, who was a personal friend, looked at me bewildered. I hadn't noticed, but the right side of my head was swollen severely. It was sticking out a good half inch, almost giving me a lopsided appearance. She told me to go to the nurse's office, quickly. I went to the nurse's suite and she promptly called my mom to take me to the doctor as she thought I may have contracted shingles from a teacher who had an outbreak that month. We went to the doctor and he looked at me and sent me home after explaining it was probably a poison of some kind while in the tree. I know my area and there isn't poison oak locally and I don't get affected by poison ivy though. After I got home, I forgot about the situation and moved on. My head got better and I didn't give it much thought until the summer when I had my first sleep paralysis situation. After I had it, I began to look into different paranormal stuff again, and for the first time, I looked into abduction stories and Mothman sightings. The conjunctivitis and different after effects made me think back to my experience in the tree stand. The reasons I'm bringing this story up is because of the lost time that went by. The sudden flash and the deer appearing from nowhere without any prior sound. And the after effect of the experience which happened the day after. I don't remember seeing anything or having nightmares directly after the incident, but it makes me wonder what I saw that night. So I went for a walk at 4.30am, two nights ago. I live in a city area that's usually pretty empty at this time, which is part of why I usually like walking around like that. I'm not bothered by it most of the time, no matter what time I go out, I don't feel worried or scared. However, as soon as I hit the bottom of my street that morning, I was feeling very anxious. I didn't know if it was just general anxiety or some sort of gut feeling, so I kept walking. The feeling kept growing until I was terrified, and yet I kept walking. It was late enough that some people were waking up and the birds were waking up too, but it, it did not quell my anxiety in the slightest. I remember smelling something dead when passing by some bushes in a neighbour's yard, and for some reason I wanted to avoid all the tall dark hedges or forested areas, to the point where I would walk in the street or on the opposite sidewalk. I had intended to go to 7-Eleven and get some coffee. By the time I was halfway there, I was so distraught that I just turned off and started heading home. It felt like something was following me or watching me, and I couldn't shake that feeling. 
I didn't feel any better until I was well within my neighborhood. And as I was opening my front door, I turned for a split second, thought I saw what seemed to be a very, very tall old man standing behind my next door neighbor's hedges. I'm not even sure I saw it correctly. As I said, it was just a second, but it made me jump as I opened the door. Since then, I felt discomfort at night, but I'm not sure if it's just anxiety from the experience or if it's something else. I've had a lot of paranormal experiences, but nothing has ever made me feel so terrified as that walk. I still don't know what it was. Whether it was some kind of warning or something was in fact following me. But I don't plan on going out at night again, anytime soon. However, I was wondering if any of you might have an idea. I know it's not extremely detailed. Sometimes I attribute this to a very strange encounter I had when I was around four. I had just come out of the house with my baby sister. We lived in a condo area, six condos to each group, two above us and the same for the other side across from us, all connected with just some steps and stones underneath to separate the condos. But as kids, we'd play on the rocks. One morning, me and my sister walk outside and out of the rocks under the steps, a weird blue spider-esque thing arises. It just rose up. And I know it's a memory and not a dream, for a fact. One, my dreams don't capture reality so perfectly, and the physics of the rocks falling off it were too real. Not to mention, my sister remembers this as well. But it rose up. It was maybe four feet tall. No four legs. No discernible face. And was a striking blue colour. But it was weird, because it moved but didn't move at the same time almost like it vibrated into places, like it came to the sidewalk but didn't move its legs. I know it was turning, but it wasn't moving. You could just tell. It had an oval-like head. My sister started to cry uncontrollably, but I wasn't scared. But for some reason, I acted scared. I don't know why. Also, it was broad daylight when this happened. I took her inside fast and shut and locked the door, and went on with daily life. I didn't think much of it. I never saw it again, nor did I mention it for years. I saw and went through a lot of things growing up, but never anything like that again. It didn't feel bad or malicious or anything. If anything, I couldn't get a read on it at all. But back to the spiders. Sometimes I think of that and wonder if that's why spiders love me so much. I remember being nine and having a daddy long legs run with me. It never stopped after that. Spiders frequently made beelines for me or mad dashes. They never bite me though. I also have a serious arachnophobia, so they rarely get on me and I don't want to go anywhere near them. A couple have made it on me, but they never bite or even move once they get on me. They just sit still. It's weird. It's a very strange experience. They'll run across ceilings and web down to get me. There was one time I woke up to one coming down diagonally to land on my head. I narrowly dodged it and it landed on my pillow, but I didn't even know they could move diagonally for some reason. I remember when we were moving out of one of our houses. I was sitting in the front yard and looked over to see a spider running through the grass toward me. I ran away and sat on the road instead, sitting at a rec centre parking lot waiting for my boyfriend. It was a spider that created the curb to come at me, and I fled from that one too. They're just all over the place, all the time. There have been two that have gotten on me while I was awake, and I'm 99% sure that they somehow materialised because my spidey senses are on point. One was a big spider, and my sister was just like, don't look, and smacked it off my shoulder. Another one was a little black spider. One time I passed out drunk in the woods with my fiancé. Classy, I know. But he walked back to find a lot of spiders on me. A variety too, some of which he had never seen just congregating around me and on me. That was pretty recent. I don't know what it is with me and spiders, and I don't know this is very long. There were many more times 
they've run towards me or people who don't believe me. Coming to believe me sincerely because of how spiders interact with me. I know people probably won't read all of this or maybe won't even understand. But if someone has any ideas, please let me know. Because this is the question I've wanted any kind of answer to for a long time. We ended up staying in a Marriott suite in New Hampshire for a two-month stay. At the beginning stages of the COVID-19 pandemic, my wife, newborn and I, everything was going as normal. I'm heading to the elevator to go outside and have a smoke. Lobby semi-full, the bar is closed, but you can buy your bottles and take them up. Now, I was all alone in my room, expecting my wife, sister-in-law and my three nephews. I turned on my PS4 to run a little Rainbow Six when I heard children's voices laughing, giggling and sounded like they're running from the elevator towards my end of the hallway. I get up from the chair and go to unlock the door. To my surprise, there's no one in the hallway. I walk towards the corner elevator and no one is on sight. I was like, what the fuck? Am I hearing things? Two days after, we're heading back to the hotel from an outing and the wife is downstairs chatting with front desk manager, which is a long time friend of ours. I put my doggy bag in the microwave and started to hear a flock of kids running and laughing, giggling, chatting away. I look through the peephole and see no one in sight yet again. I call downstairs and ask the manager, Nisha, that I keep moment hearing kids running up and down the hallway. She said, we're the only ones booked on the third floor and the third floor security and don't see anyone on the cameras either. I was like, well, I heard them right outside my door. Now this was going on just about every day to every other day. And like a clown, I open the door and still see no one. One night I'm all alone. My wife is out with the girls and this time, I swear I heard a kid's voice in my bathroom. And I go to check, no one in there. I'm watching TV. I think it was the Travel Channel and a paranormal show was on at the moment and it was displaying a cigar company that had child labour going on in the 1800s. And at one point, there was a fire accident that burned the cigar warehouse down and there was over 80 deaths. Many were women and children. And when they exposed the building and whereabouts, it was the very building where we were staying. It was bought out not too long ago after I stay and renovated by Marriott Suites. I immediately got goosebumps and looked at the door. I opened it up and stared down the hallways looking for signs. I even googled it up and found out that it was factual. Now, I wasn't scared, I was all excited. My wife was a different story. She was nervous and scared. I think we heard them and felt them more due to our child in the room. My wife though, had me pack my things up, talking about, let's head back home. Last year, my now fiancé and I moved into my parents' house. My parents had built onto my grandparents' home when they got married, so I now live in what used to be my grandparents' home. This is just to clarify that we have our own undisturbed living area. I have a bathroom attached to my bedroom, which also attaches on the other side to my brother's old room. This night, my brother was home and asked if I wanted to go to the pub with him. I declined and went to bed around 10pm. My fiancé was working late, so I was alone in my room. Around 2am, I was woken by some banging and scratching on the wall in the bathroom. It sounded to me like somebody had a 2 by 4 piece of timber and was hitting it against the wall and then dragging it down. This happened repeatedly for a few minutes. I sat up in bed and listened for a while. I didn't feel frightened. To be honest, I thought that my brother had come home drunk and was just being bizarre. It struck me as odd because I could see the light was not on in the bathroom. After a few minutes, the light did come on and I heard my brother enter the bathroom. The noise immediately stopped. I didn't think too much more about it because I still thought it was him. 
maybe fumbling around for the light switch or something. I went back to sleep and forgot about it. The next morning, when I was making coffee, my brother asked me the eerie question. Was that you making noise last night? A few weeks later, I heard the noise again, but again with no explanation. Finally, another few weeks later, I finished having a shower one morning and had just returned to my bedroom. I heard the noise again, directly on the other side of the door. I was pleased that I could finally discover the source, so I gleefully pulled open the door and... Nothing. There was nobody there and no apparent source of the noise, which, by the way, had stopped. I then looked up and remembered that the entrance to the attic is in that room. It happened in August 2019, while I was visiting my cousin and friends in Yokohama. I was 19 at that time. I was on my way back from my friend's apartment to my cousin's place where I was staying. It was close enough, so I decided to walk, despite it already being dark and late. I was close to Yokohama Harbour, walking on the pathway right next to the water. In the distance, I noticed a figure standing next to the railings, staring at the sea. There was nobody else around. I got a strange feeling from them, but I had to pass them. The figure didn't move when I got close. For some reason, I stopped to look at them when I was right behind. The person was wearing a black trench coat reaching past their knees and had their hands tucked in their pockets. While I was staring at them, they turned around to look at me. The street lamps provided a good light and I was standing close enough to make out their features. It was a girl, clearly foreign, and the first thing I noticed was how absolutely beautiful she was. Rather tall, maybe around 5'8", dressed in modern, entirely black clothes, with dark, wavy hair reaching her shoulders. She was young, couldn't be older than 18, maybe younger. My gaze lingered on her eyes and a chill went down my spine. They were light, but completely empty. It was like looking into a void. She stared at me. Her expression was blank. It didn't change since she turned to me, but I had a feeling she was waiting for me to do or say something. I tried, but I couldn't find words. I was frozen in place. We stared at each other for a while, until at one moment I blinked, and she disappeared. There was nowhere she could have gone. Just vanished into thin air. Scared, I hurried to my cousin's apartment. When he saw me, he pointed out that I looked white as a sheet. But hearing my story, he just laughed that I hallucinated a hot girl. I researched Japanese urban legends out of curiosity, but I couldn't find anything about a young girl wearing a trench coat. She didn't even look like a ghost. It was like looking at a normal human being. A few days later, while my cousin and I were on our way back to his apartment, something on the other side of the street caught my eye. I looked, and in the shadow of a black alley, Leaning against a wall was the same girl, still dressed in the black, wearing a coat. She was clearly looking at me. Her expression was the same as then. Blank. Maybe a little bored. I shook my cousin's shoulder and told him to look, but when he did, she was already gone. Just vanished again. For the rest of my stay, I had a feeling someone was watching me whenever I went outside, and sometimes I could see the black coat in the crowd. It could have just been my paranoia, but I was seriously afraid. When I came back home, the feeling stopped, and nothing weird happened again. The only time I've actually seen a ghost was when I was about 16. I'm 33 now, but I remember it clearly. I lived with my grandparents primarily and had my bedroom in the basement. They had lived in their wartime house since they got married, 55 years prior. They had eight kids and I hadn't heard a single ghost story from my grandparents or any of my aunts and uncles. Only my cousin, who used to feed a dog under the bed. But that's another story. 
As part of my weird high school routine, I used to wake up at 2 or 3 every morning, have a bowl of cereal and watch Pokemon. My internal clock would wake me up, and actually, it still does sometimes. One night when I woke up, I felt a presence nearby. I looked to my right, right by the doorway to my room. Even though my room was pitch black, I clearly saw the figure of a man. I thought for sure someone had broken in and I was going to be raped or murdered because this figure just didn't seem ghost-like. The figure was a young man, probably in his early 20s. He was overweight, had blonde hair and glasses and was wearing a red t-shirt and jeans. He wasn't some ominous shadow or an old-timey renaissance ghost. He looked like a standard early 2000s guy. I had no idea who this person was and had never seen him before. But I remember him well to this day. I stared at him for what felt like 10 minutes, but was probably 10 seconds. I waited for him to make the first move. I guess towards murdering me, but I didn't get any evil vibes. Although I was super freaked out, this was not the image I'd conjure up when I'd think about ghosts. I finally turned my bedside lamp on, and when I did, he disappeared. At this point, I was wide awake and couldn't stop obsessing over what just happened. Again, I was scared, but it seemed harmless enough that I didn't feel the need to wake up my grandparents. I read a few chapters of my Buffy the Vampire Slayer book before trying to fall asleep again. This is a little bit difficult to talk about, as it happened last Thursday night and is still very emotional. A little backstory. I've always been in touch with the other side. They use me a lot. Typically, I have no emotional connection with any spirit I come in contact with. This was different. An important piece of information is that I have a six-year-old daughter. When I go outside, oftentimes she'll be directly on the other side of the front door and asking when I'll be back in. In the early afternoon, my wife and I had stepped outside for a few minutes. As usual, I heard a little girl on the other side of the door. Not so unusual, the little girl said mama. My daughter always calls me mommy or mom. I answered yes dear, just as I always would. But there was no response from the other side of the door. I realised that my daughter was playing in her room the whole time. Later that night, my wife and I were laying in bed scrolling Reddit, and my six-year-old had only just fallen asleep. I heard what sounded like the six-year-old getting out of bed. I waited for her to come out to our door, but she never showed up. I got up to check on her. She was still very much asleep. I crawled back into bed, and after a few moments, I heard it again. We have cats, so hearing noises at night isn't out of the ordinary. I thought nothing of it. Whenever six-year-old is standing in my doorway, I can feel it. Awake or asleep, I feel it. Well, I had that same feeling after hearing the noise again. I turned around expecting to see my dark-haired, green-eyed daughter. Only the child I saw was so blonde, her hair was almost white, and her eyes were golden brown. I looked away for a split second at my wife, and the child was gone. About 30 seconds later, I heard that same voice say, Mama, just as a few hours earlier. My wife didn't see her nor hear her, but she very clearly heard it the first time. The age of this child is what mine would have been, had I not miscarried. The father is blonde with golden eyes. She had my curls and his chubby cheeks. I could just feel that she was my baby. She came to me because I needed something to keep me going. Okay, when I was a little girl, from really my youngest memories until I was probably around 12 years old, I heard voices. Not like someone with schizophrenia hears voices and may tell what person something specific. It was like I could overhear others' conversations. However, maybe not actually understanding the exact words they may have said. For example, I remember it happened all the time when I was in my bedroom, and I'd be playing with my Barbies by myself. Although I was using my imagination and playing with the dolls like normal, 
I would start to hear people, always adult sounding, talking to each other. It didn't sound like it was scary, nor did it sound muffled. But I didn't make out those specific words and they were just spoken. I was really used to this happening all the time. I didn't let it interrupt my playing. I just go about being my kid self. I also thought this was something that happened to everyone and never thought of it as odd. It just always happened. Let me clarify, this did not always happen. As if I were playing with other children. I could sometimes still pick up on the voices. But it wasn't nearly as loud, or maybe I just ignored them. When I was by myself, it was so loud, and there were so many conversations going on at once, I'd sometimes yell out loud for them to stop. I'd hear a few say things like, what, who's that? But only faintly, and then it would go back to just regular voices. Never a single conversation to understand. Again, several conversations at the same time. I never saw any ghost or had any scary feelings or uneasiness growing up. Nothing strange except for the voices. All the time. Now, I do want to say, although it's not something I talk about, I was being molested during this time. For the same time frame by a much, much older cousin. For years, I thought this was just my kid's way of dealing with it. Obviously my defence mechanism, right? I no longer believe this because when I was in my late 20s... One of my cousins and I were discussing crap from our shitty childhood, and she mentioned hearing voices when she was a kid. I about shit myself. She knew immediately by my reaction, I had to. I told her that when I was little, I thought everyone had, and it wasn't until I was late teen that I realised not everyone had this. We discussed this for a long time, and our experiences were almost identical. Later, I told my daughter how our cousin and I got into this conversation and hadn't told her any details about it being several conversations. And she revealed the exact same thing happening to her as a child. How could I not have known? Because I didn't ask. Why didn't I ask? I convinced myself later not to talk about it because I must have been crazy. And again, I figured it was just because I was messed up for my cousin being a sick freak towards me. Sometimes, they would just get so loud. A few years ago, I lived with my ex. We had a lot of paranormal experiences together, and I've come to realise he had a way of attracting that kind of energy. Since leaving him, I've only had a few minor experiences. At one point, we lived in a house where the previous owner may have died inside. We couldn't confirm it 100%, but were pretty sure. The house had been remodelled, so it was believed she had passed in what was now the master bedroom, attached to the bedroom where I slept. She was an older lady who was sick and passed away due to natural causes, nothing too dramatic. We had a few different experiences in this home, in this room. One night when I was asleep, I was awoken by a loud woman's scream. It startled me awake and I sat straight up. It was dark. I couldn't see anything. The scream only woke me up. Not my dogs or my boyfriend. I brushed it off as a bad dream and went back to sleep. I told my boyfriend about it the next day. Another guy. We were both woken up by a loud scream. This time, it sounded almost like an animal. It sounded like it was coming from near the foot of our bed. One of my dogs did make noise when he slept, so I thought it might be him. Again, it was dark and I couldn't see. I felt around at the foot of the bed, but the dogs were all up between us. There were no dogs at the foot of the bed where it sounded like the sound came from. It's also worth noting my dogs are chihuahuas. They wouldn't really be capable of a noise like that. But I was trying to look at it logically to see how it could be explained away. One night, I was woken by my ex grabbing my arm suddenly. I looked over him and he looked scared. He was a big guy, six feet and about 275 pounds. He said he woke up suddenly when he felt something grab his leg and tried to pull him off the bed. It scared him so he reached out for me and it stopped. 
Once he saw a shadow head peep out from behind the shower curtain to look into our room. It was a clear view if the door was open and it often was. There was always smaller noises and creaks in the house too. I did wake up to a big shadow dog by my side of the bed once as well. It's worth mentioning we had roommates right down the hall who never experienced anything. They never heard the screams either. Once we moved, we were never woken up by the screams again. I feel like it's also worth mentioning that while many of these experiences were startling and I was scared at the time, I never felt threatened or unsafe in the home. I actually really liked the place. We only moved because the landlord was selling the home. This happened quite a few years back now. I lived alone with my then boyfriend and our dogs. I came home from work one day with a terrible headache. I decided to go straight to bed to try and sleep it off. It was probably only like 5pm. I went into our room, turned the lights off and knocked out. My then boyfriend used to go to a car meet every Friday night and I knew he was going to go this night too. I woke up about midnight and checked my phone. I knew this was about the time my boyfriend used to get home, and he would probably be showing up soon. I stretched out in bed from my very long nap, which alerted my three dogs. Chihuahuas, just for reference, that I was finally awake. They started jumping on me as they were excited I had finally woken up. I was grumpy since I had just woken up and was still tired, so I kind of snapped at them and told them to stop. Then... I heard a very loud shh. I was in our bedroom which was pretty dark since I had turned the lights off before I went to sleep. The lights were on in the living room right outside our bedroom. The shh was so loud I thought it was my boyfriend messing with me so I even grunted in response. Since the lights were on in the living room I thought maybe he was home a little early and maybe watching some Netflix. It was quiet after the shh though so I waited thinking he was between episodes, but it stayed quiet. I'm afraid of the dark even as an adult, so it made sense my boyfriend at the time would leave the lights on for me. I was absolutely terrified. My automatic response in these spooky situations is to act completely unafraid. So I got up super nonchalant like everything was dandy and slowly and as calmly as possible walked over to turn on the lights. Whilst turning on the light, I was able to glance at our living room area and see I was indeed home alone. I again very calmly and slowly walked back to bed, picked up my phone and texted my ex telling him what happened. He thought I was worried about an intruder, so I reiterated I was not and was sure I was home alone. He was almost home and showed up about five minutes later. The shh was so loud and when I was thinking about it after it happened... It sounded like it came from the closet in our room. Spooked the shit out of me. Nothing else really happened at that house to me, but my ex did have some other experiences. Never really felt threatened though. If there was something there, it didn't seem so bad. Two other houses we moved to after this had, had stuff happen. One more than the other. So my boyfriend has a question about something his mother experienced. A few months ago, we're certain he and his mother caught COVID. While he got through it okay, she kept getting worse and worse. We were eventually concerned enough to feel the need to call an ambulance. Well, when she had to go, she died twice. She said she saw nothing when she died. It was just dark. She's a very religious person, so she's a little concerned about it. But anyways, she stated she saw a big man with greyish blue satin suit and black round sunglasses who was apparently her doctor. The first time she saw him, he explained the situation by pulling the ventilator out of her throat. Once it was out, he said that she was having a hard time breathing and they needed to work on it or the ventilator would have to be put back in. She begged him not to put it back in. He said they would have to or she would die. The second time he came in and asked how she was doing. 
She told him she was doing better and stopped, mesmerized by telling him, you're the doctor that saved my life. He agreed. He told her that he needed samples from her and left the room. A nurse came in and his mom asked who the doctor was. The nurse was confused and said she never saw a doctor that matches that description after his mom explained what he looked like. This happened a few times, the exact same way. But the third time he came in, she asked the doctor if he could go up to the nurse's station and let them know that he was a real person. He agreed he would as a nurse walked in. And my boyfriend's mom said to the nurse, this is the doctor. This is the doctor that saved my life. The nurse looked at him and he told the nurse that he needed samples. Then he left the room and his mom asked the nurse what his name was. And she said she's never seen him before. That was the last time she's seen him. She saw him not only at the main hospital, but also the rehab facility she had to go to. The story takes place in a farmstead in Ireland. The activity was particularly strong in the cabin. Really, I don't know when this started or what it is. However, I'm about 80% sure it's demonic in nature. My family is extremely Christian. The farmstead has had countless blessings in it and countless masses. The house itself was built on a famine trail. Basically, on the left side of the house in the living room, there's a trail. A trail people during the famine used to take to the shore, to mass. A long time ago, there would be activity. Stuff ripped out from walls, footsteps, voices, possibly apparitions. A step was put in outside so the spirits would take a different route around the house. So now, it ceased. But now I think something else has moved in, feeding off their energy. It first happened about three years ago. Late at night, I'd smell sulphur. Hear rustling, nothing much. Then I would feel an unbearable feeling of terror. A burning sensation in my chest would rise up like heartburn around 3am. I would squeeze my eyes shut because I felt if I opened them, I'd die. It was terrifying and would always take place from 3 to 4am. That's the weak part. In the cow shed outside, it's even worse. There's just such an oppressive feeling. Once, I think I even saw something. Crouched in the corner, there was nothing shadowy about it. Nothing ghostly about it. It was solid. A woman, I think, back turned, crouched in the corner. I didn't see it at first. I smelt it. Like rotting flesh and sulphur. I'd gone in for my skateboard that was leaning against the wall. When I smelt that, I spun round, spying it in the far end of the cow shed, crouched near some farm tools. As soon as I saw it, I knew it saw me. Even though it stayed, turned the whole time, just an oppressive feeling of guilt and terror, I felt unreasonably violent. I wanted to kill something. But all my feelings just faded and I just felt numb, and I realised I was walking towards it. As soon as I realised it all bubbled up again and I could hear screaming. So, so, so loud. I turned heel and ran. Locking the door behind me and sprinting back inside. I've never felt anything like that before. It happened once. I've been back since. Back in that cow shed since. Though I still feel uneasy there and my dog always whimpers. I'm going back there in a week or so for Easter. Not looking forward to it. This all started maybe four years ago. In my room opposite my bed is a window. The window has these nice lilac curtains with a shiny reflective curtain rail. At the end of the rail is a sphere. It began when I started to see a shadow reflected in that sphere. It filled me with just unrelenting terror. The stomach just falls. A figure of a man, or at least a man-shaped thing. It's completely black and seems to get closer when you focus on me. I learned to live with it. Not even looking at the curtain rail. I kept doing this for four years now until it left the curtain rail. It's not there anymore. 
I feel now I've ignored it. It wants me to see it. My dog, whenever he's in my room, hates sitting on the bed. This is a recent thing. I've said before that I think there's something in the laundry room. In my upstairs bathroom, there's a separate room. The door to said room keeps unlocking, sometimes right in front of me. Whenever I wash my face, having to turn my back to the room to face the sink, I just feel waves of unease. There was also the time I was home alone and heard something on the stairs. Locked myself in the downstairs bathroom with a knife. I could hear footsteps and loud breathing upstairs and on the stairs. I could also hear my dog losing his goddamn mind. When my mom came home and I felt safe enough to leave the bathroom, my dog was sitting at the bottom of the stairs. He was absolutely fixated. He's the type of dog that when you come home, he'll jump all over you so you can imagine how weird it was just sitting there, silently. So far, no harm has come to me or my mother or my dog, but that doesn't negate the fact that I'm absolutely terrified. My family owns a farmhouse in Ireland. It's an extremely rural area. The house experienced some paranormal activity in the past. The living room sits directly over a path people would take to the beach to either church or coffin ships or something else. We believe these famine victims continue to walk through the house. During the 1900s or 1920s, I can't remember. My great-grandmother or my great-great-grandmother heard a noise downstairs. She rushed down to see the impossible. The sacred heart lamp, which is literally screwed into the wall, was ripped out. The coals and ashes from the fire had been strewn about. The room was absolutely trashed. Terrified, she rushed back upstairs and stayed there for the remainder of the night. In the morning, the room was untouched. Perfect as if it hadn't been trashed. The house experienced many more experiences over the coming months and possibly years. I come from a very Catholic family, so the house was blessed. The activity only ceased as a step was built. A small pathway winds to the side of the house. A step was put next to it, so the spirits would take the path, not the house. My grandmother always told me to not ever, ever remove the stone. You would go on, but... There's something scarier. Something happening right now that I fear. It's a very dense, though quite small patch of forest. Whenever I enter, I'm filled with dread. Makes me, quite frankly, want to piss my goddamn pants. I never feel alone there. As soon as I smell the wretched smell of rotting flesh, I hightail it out of there because I know it's close. It felt evil, malicious, and I don't know it had a physical body until I saw it. It was night time and I was looking out the window from my room. It looked like a person, a rotting person, a corpse. It was long and gangly, and its arms looked like they had been pulled out of the sockets and the elbows jutted out. Its legs also looked disjointed. Its skin looked grey and sort of translucent. I couldn't tell a gender, I don't think it even has one. It had a horrible sunken face. Its eyes were so sunken, I couldn't see them, but I could see the light reflecting off them when it looked at me. I've never been more scared in my entire life when we locked eyes. Not when I split my head open. Not when I lost my dog. Not when I watched the news. I could properly see its face now. Its face did not have human features. Its nose, well, it didn't have a nose. Two slits in its face was it. Its cheekbones jutted out and it had no lips, but its mouth spread from ear to ear, and it was filled with rotted, brown, chipped, blunt teeth. My stomach dropped and I felt physically sick, and soon afterwards I was physically sick. I immediately shut the curtains and prayed. I prayed and prayed and prayed for what seemed like hours. I did feel better afterwards. When I left the house the next morning... It looked like an animal's claw marks outside the door. 
I knew it had to be real and not a dream. But to convince myself that last little bit, I went to the edge of the forest, praying as I went. I also had holy water and rosary beads, anything I could get my mitts on. And sure enough, there were two deep, unhuman footprints in the mud. I was terrified, and when I looked up, I felt its gaze again, like this time it would come get me. I ran. I ain't athletic and I'm kind of chubby, but geez, I vaulted over a three foot high fence and ran up a goddamn hill to the house. I never, ever go to the forest anymore. And a funny feeling tells me I'm safe as long as I don't go to the forest, especially at night. I don't know what's in there. I know it doesn't want me specifically. Just people that wander in too far. If demons exist, this one, and I hope y'all don't ever meet it. My grandmother owns a house that was built by her ancestors, not too long after the famine. My grandmother's grandmother was in her bed one night when she heard a crash from downstairs. Obviously thinking she was being broken into, she ran downstairs, and the old style fireplace had its coals and contents strewn across the round. The sacred heart lamp was on the ground, surrounded by bits of wall. She knew immediately, this ain't no burglar, so she ran upstairs and went to bed, but she could hear creepy shit all night from downstairs. In the morning, when she went to check, the fireplace was completely normal. Lamp in wall, no scratches on the floor, nothing out of the ordinary. I wasn't told what happened after, but I'm guessing she had to mass to bless the house or something. Now that house is up from the sea. Beautiful place in the Beira Peninsula island. We own loads of land from there to the sea. Now during the famine, people would walk where our house was, to the beach, to the famine ships and mass. What we think is that the spirits of the famine were still walking through the house, though only on the living room side because that's where the trail was. I thought this was all poppycock until I spent more time when I could actually comprehend things in that goddamn house. I'd see people looking at me from windows, floors creaking in apparitions. Never told anyone this because I thought they wouldn't believe me, but... One night when I was about 10, I went downstairs for a drink of water, but halfway down the stairs I stopped. Because in front of me was a train of ghostly white figures, faces just about recognisable walking through the house. Obviously, I was frozen with shock, but just inched out of view. Gaunt men, women and children wearing literal famine rags, shuffled through the side of the house with the living room. It was like I could almost hear the faint whisper of chatter. Of course, I shot up the rest of the stairs and into my bed as quietly as possible. Now, I won't go anywhere in that house alone or stay in it alone. To back all this up, we found skeletons in the backyard. Famine skeletons, lots of them. I asked, and my uncle said there's probably hundreds more around the property, and probably even below the house. My grandfather, who my siblings and I were very close with, passed away in 2013. I was 14 when he passed, and I'm 21 now. My best friend, who's able to speak and see the spirits, had told me one day that there was a short man standing behind me. I asked what he looked like, and he said he was short, had black hair, and was combed back and a jacket on that I have hanging by the mirror to this day. She said he was also wearing a hat, all indicating that that was my grandfather. She had never seen him before and confirmed it was him when I showed her a picture. She told me that he's been following me all day because he needed to tell me something. The girl I was dating at the time drew a picture that had my grandpa's name on it and I put it on my wall. She hadn't seen it at all and told me that my grandpa wanted me to take down the picture because the person who drew it had bad intentions for me and he didn't like her. She also had no idea I had his jacket in my room and he told her to tell me to take his jacket and put it by my bed that same night. I was totally freaked out because she didn't know my grandpa, the jacket or the picture. 
He had always wanted to check in on me and told me he loved and missed me. That whole night, I couldn't stop crying because I had waited so long for my grandpa to contact me, and somehow, then he did. I also felt like he saved my life because this girl was super manipulative and lied to me. She had made me suicidal. I started self-harming, and she was just horrible all around. She lied to me about her mom accepting her and liking me. She lied about self-harming a lot. And she lied about her mom beating her. She threatened suicide a lot when I tried to leave and so on. My mom told me later that he chose this person because he knew she was someone who could be trusted and he knew of her abilities. I never forget that night and I sometimes get chills when I think about it. My grandpa does visit sometimes, whether it's through a dream or I feel his presence in my room. He sometimes sits on the end of my bed or touches my feet, which he did to my mom and her siblings when they were younger. In November of 2017, my new girlfriend and I had only been dating a month when we took our first weekend getaway. We live in southern Illinois and drove about five and a half hours to Chattanooga, Tennessee to see Ruby Falls and Rock City, both great attractions. But unless you live within seven hours or are just passing through to another great location for a day or so, I really wouldn't recommend making a family vacation out of it. The area is mostly pretty, and my lady and I, being the stoners we are, of course love a picturesque cityscape, especially when mountains are present. We were only in Chattanooga for about a day overall, as it was dark out when we got there Saturday evening. We really only had time to go to dinner, enjoy vigorous lovemaking, and smoke a couple joints in the parking lot of the days in that night. The next day, we went to the aforementioned attractions, and the last thing we did, as it was getting dark soon, was go to Rock City, where they have this weird, completely dark cave area that's full of glow-in-the-dark fairy tale creatures and classic story characters. But instead of taking our time looking at the individual sections of the exhibit, like we had planned. My wife was now very insistent that we leave Tennessee as soon as possible. She wouldn't tell me what was going on, but something in her eyes said that this was all very wrong. And being new to the relationship and not wanting to upset her, I grabbed her hand and we rushed out of there. We grabbed coffee and dinner about halfway back home when she told me that she felt an evil, angry entity present where we were in the cave exhibit and that it was so overwhelming, negative, that we had to leave. While I didn't feel that myself personally, I will say it's a weird place to stay the least though, so I kind of just dropped it, and we made our way back home around 1am. We showered and went to sleep about half an hour later, as we were very tired from the whole weekend of travel. Now here's where the experience actually occurred. About an hour or so after falling asleep, I very suddenly awoke to the very dark feeling of dread. Like everything in the world was wrong. And it was the same feeling that I had when I saw my wife's eyes earlier that day in the trippy cave exhibit. I closed my eyes and tried to ignore it. When in my mind's eye, I saw or even now I'll admit possibly imagined a horribly skinny charred black arm with a hand that had only three fingers with razor sharp black claws reaching up from under the bed and reaching for my wife. It was so real that my heart started pounding and I was absolutely terrified. That's when my wife let out the most horrifying scream I've ever heard in my entire life. And when she jumped out of our bed and ran for life and was almost to the front door of our apartment, when I finally grabbed her and helped to get control of herself, I've never seen so much fear and horror in the eyes of someone I've loved before. She told me right there, there was no way we were staying the night at our place with what happened and I agreed. It was very late, but I called my parents and they let us sleep in the guest room at their house. After I got my wife to calm down and go back to sleep, I privately told my dad what happened and, I, and what I saw and him being the very religious man he is, said that what was attacking was certainly a demon and the black three clawed arm was meant to be a mockery to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. This shook and unsettled me. For another two years, I kept what I saw that night to myself, until 
when my wife finally brought it up one day and told me she felt something very evil with sharp nails reaching out and grabbing her from under the bed. I finally confirmed my side of the story to her because up until then, she was under the impression that it was her alone that knew what was going on that night and she was mortified when I finally told her. We're both glad we're no longer in that apartment and we agreed that while we never needed to hear each other's side of the story to know what happened exactly as it occurred that night, it definitely helped us grow as a couple to have that horrible experience.